So can you tell me more about this particular study that was published in Scientific Reports? In 1990, you know, Saddam Hussein's Iraqi army invaded Kuwait and the United States and a bunch of coalition countries. We sent 700,000 troops halfway around the world to the Middle East with all their high-tech equipment, waged a basically a six-week war, a five-week uh, air bombing campaign, and then a five-day ground assault, mainly a tank battle. And it was over, and it was a it was just a one-sided victory with very few casualties on the American side and uh, uh, completely uh, won, the, won it and uh, expelled the Iraqi army from Kuwait, or, which they never returned. Uh, but as the troops were starting to come home, about a quarter of the 700,000 people developed some strange symptoms like a chronic fatigue, Cognitive problems, that is, memory problems, concentration problems, balance disturbances, like feelings of vertigo and difficulty exercising, getting unusually fatigued, severe diarrhea, uh, skin rashes, a depressed feeling, and body pain. And these symptoms have lasted now for 30 years. Most of the people who got it have not gotten well, and it ended many military careers, and the majority of them. And so it's a very serious problem. Uh, but when they came home, initial investigations looked into it and were unable to find out what it was or what caused it or what to do about it. And so pretty soon it was decided that we'll just call it stress. Uh, they got stressed from de being deployed, uh, like PTSD, and uh, we'll uh, use uh, group psychotherapy, which is cheap. Early on, our, we did a study re relevant now to this study that we just published. We were the first to do a brain imaging study. We used a technique called uh, magnetic resonance spectroscopy. Now, every laboratory in the world that measures anything uses MR spectroscopy, or, or NMR is another word for it, to measure chemical concentrations in test tubes or whatever. Radiologists learned how to use a brain scanner to do an MR spectroscopy analysis. So you could actually train the, the scanner on a small area of the deep brain, uh, like say a, a sugar cube size, a uh, little volume of the brain. You could focus the scanner down on that and, and run the, the uh, MR spectroscopy scan routine. And it gives you a chemical readout of what are, what's the chemical concentrations in the deep part of the brain without having any effects on the person, which is pretty amazing. 